I'm about to introduce you to some of the most distinctive music on earth. This is the first of two video lectures over the gamelan music of Indonesia. Over the course of this unit, you're going to learn what a gamelan is, and we'll learn about two tuning systems for the gamelan, systems known as pelog and slendro. We'll explore those sounds by means of several gendings, and we'll learn about some differences between the music of Java and Bali. You'll also be learning about loud and soft playing styles, which are well represented in the second piece that I'll present in this lecture. As you hear this music, I believe you'll be struck by how different it sounds from any music we've heard so far in this class. And I'll try to show you why that is by comparing the two tuning systems in Indonesia with the diatonic scale used in Western music. And of course, we'll be exploring the formal structures of the music we hear and comparing those also with the kinds of structures we've encountered elsewhere. The modern nation of Indonesia is an archipelago that is, a cluster of islands that were all generated by the same geologic processes, namely seafloor subduction and volcanism. Those islands have been occupied by humans for tens of thousands of years. There was even an offshoot of the ancestral species Homo erectus that made it there and persisted until about 50,000 years ago until the first modern humans arrived there. The islands were colonized by the Netherlands and known as the Dutch East Indies from around 1600 and won their independence in 1945 when they were renamed Indonesia. During those three and a half centuries of colonial rule, local aristocracies flourished on the islands, especially on Java and Bali. And it was in their palaces that the gamelan tradition grew, alongside the puppet theater that provided the entertainment for those aristocrats. The music of the gamelan, in other words, was largely an adjunct, much like the orchestra that plays in the pit for an opera or a musical in the West. And like the Western orchestra, the gamelan gradually became independent of puppet theater and took on a life of its own, with its own music delivered in concert performances. So what is a gamelan? Well, it's a collection of musical instruments and the players who play them. In other words, it's the Indonesian equivalent of an orchestra. Most of the instruments of the gamelan are percussion instruments made of metal, usually bronze or brass, and you can probably intuit from the illustrations I'm showing you that this is a very expensive undertaking. In fact, the artisans who know how to make and maintain these instruments are held in very high regard in Indonesian society and rewarded handsomely for their expertise. This line drawing illustrates the instruments commonly found in the Javanese gamelan, and it would be a good idea for you to pause the video long enough to memorize a few of these names and develop an idea of what sounds you can expect from those instruments. Let me group these instruments into categories for you. Across the top, you see two racks of hanging knobbed gongs. The set of hanging gongs on the left is known collectively as kempul, and on the right you see the siam and gong, with gong, a word of Indonesian origin, serving both as a category and the name of a specific instrument within that category. Let's start with the category assignment. Any knobbed metallic percussion instrument that produces a defined pitch is a gong. So that applies both to the hanging gongs along the top of the illustration and the kettle-shaped gongs that are set in racks, identified here and reading from left to right as bonang, kempyang, ketuk, and kenong. Note that the large cymbal-like percussion instrument known as a tam-tam -tam found in Western orchestras is not, by definition, a gong, although it is frequently referred to as one. 
Most of the other instruments in the gondolon are slab metallophones, with slab referring to the metal bars or keys on which one plays with metal beaters. These are similar, in other words, to xylophones, marimbas, and vibraphones in the West. These include all the members of the Gender family, again, left to right, Slentham, Sarum, Gambang, and beneath the Gambang, the Gender itself. The instruments in this collection that do not meet the description of tuned metallic percussion instruments are the pair of drums known as Kendang, the zither-like Kelempung, the two-string Rebab, and the flute known as Suling. The Rebab is a sort of violin, and it shares its name both with the Rababa of Egypt and the Rubab of Afghanistan, although it is far more like the Egyptian instrument than the Afghan one. Regarding the Suling, you can see that there are two flutes in that rack, each with only four finger holes, and the different placement of those finger holes is on account of the two tuning systems, Pelog and Slendro, that I've already mentioned. It's time now to talk about those scales. In the interest of explaining this fully, I'll direct your attention to a YouTube video that covers this material, and in that video you can actually hear the scales rather than having to be satisfied with my pedestrian description of them. Be sure to watch that video after you've watched this one. I'll leave a link in the description below. What you need to know about the two Indonesian tuning systems is that the Slendro scale is a five-note scale, the Pelog scale a seven-note scale, and in both systems the scale steps are approximately equidistant from each other. In other words, the seven notes of the Pelog scale are not like the seven notes of the diatonic scale because the diatonic scale includes a couple of half steps while those do not exist in these Indonesian tuning systems. That results in music that can sound quite alien to ears accustomed to diatonic tunings, as most of you are. Of course, it's a good idea to keep always in mind that to the ears of those who have been immersed in the gamelan tradition all their lives, Western music sounds just as out of tune as gamelan music is apt to sound to Westerners. Now, to complicate all this, the tunings do vary from island to island and court to court, so there's almost no systematizing them. At any rate, almost everything that I say about them will be generalizations. I have a couple of pieces today to illustrate the instruments and tunings that I've talked about, and I'll start with a bubaran. A musical composition in Indonesia is known as a gending, and a bubaran is a gending with a time-honored role in musical performances. The word bubaran actually means dispersal, and the reason it's applied to this type of gending is that this is the music ordinarily played while the audience is leaving the performance venue. In this recording, you'll hear graduate students in ethnomusicology at the University of Wisconsin-Madison building up the gending one section, or cycle, at a time. Each cycle consists of four phrases known as gongans, which are identified in my analysis as A, B, C, and D. Each of those phrases is 16 beats long, with most of them comprised of repeated four-note motifs. On the 16th beat of each cycle, a single stroke on the large hanging gong marks the end of that cycle. The first of the cycles is played as an unadorned melody, a balungan, or skeletal melody. Each subsequent cycle adds more instruments to the mix, playing music consisting of increasingly fast notes, and the piece ends with everyone playing either the balungan or one of its many adornments. Those adornments are polyphonic layers of sound that are added atop each other in ever smaller, that is, faster, subdivisions, resulting finally in a glorious welter of metallophone sound. 
In this performance, the drummer signals a gradual speeding up during the penultimate cycle and then a slowing down at the end. I've prepared an analysis that I hope will guide you through this efficiently and help you make sense of some music that might sound quite unfamiliar. Be sure to relate my analysis to the unfamiliar vocabulary that I've just used in describing the details of gamelan music. This is the Bubaran Kambang Passer. I trust you notice that as more and more instruments were added to that increasingly polyphonic texture, the music took on a clockwork quality, like a gigantic mechanical device of some kind, complete with gears and pulleys. I just used the word polyphonic, which I trust is familiar to you by now. There are essentially three places in the world where a great polyphonic tradition has evolved independent of the other two, and one of those places is Indonesia. The other two are Europe and Sub-Saharan Africa. 
None of those traditions sounds anything like the others. What they share is complexity, and unsurprisingly, they come from three generalized cultures that value complexity generally in their art, which of course must say something in turn about their respective generalized worldviews. The polyphony of Indonesia consists largely of a sort of rhythmic layering, with an assortment of instruments playing either a skeletal melody, a balungan, in a fairly sedate tempo, or a variant of that melody in faster notes. If we were to notate this music with the familiar Western system of rhythmic notation, we'd see music ranging in rhythmic profile from whole notes all the way down to the level of sixteenths. That's five levels of rhythmic divisions, which explains the mechanical style of gamelan music, its clockwork quality. The gending you just heard is representative of Javanese gamelan music, which is generally regarded as the more traditional and usually more sedate styles of gamelan music, with gamelan music from Bali usually being flashier and more modern sounding. The instruments are very close to the same, so the differences between those two sub-traditions are more stylistic than anything. Nevertheless, there are stylistic similarities that run very deep in both, notably that clockwork quality I was just describing. That quality is very well exemplified, along with several others, in the next gending I'll play for you, a piece entitled Kosalia Arini, written in 1969 by the prolific Balinese composer Wayan Berata. This is a fascinating composition played on a set of instruments tuned to the slendro scale and consisting of a number of discrete sections. In fact, the quality of the whole could be described as episodic, and on account of that fact you will hear abrupt changes in style several times, along with cavernous silences at unexpected times. The piece features virtuosic playing on all of the gamelan's instruments, including solos and solo-like passages for the suling and rebab. You may notice that many of the long notes played by metallic instruments include a sort of fast wobble in the sound, almost like vibrato. This is an effect that is produced by playing two instruments simultaneously, instruments tuned almost to the same pitch, but not quite. In other words, they're a little out of tune with each other, and the wobbling effect is produced by interference waves, not unlike those that you can see if you walk to a still pond on a windless day and toss a couple of rocks in, then watch the waves propagate from the impact points and notice how they intersect, sometimes amplifying each other, sometimes canceling each other out. That's what's happening here. This music is typical of that flashier Balinese style that I was talking about earlier. Several times you'll hear interruptions known as kebyar, when a number of instruments play some intrusive, almost aggressive music. The word kebyar, in fact, means flash or to dazzle. At times, these kebyar interruptions or interjections serve as dividers between larger cyclic sections and you will hear the contrast between loud and soft playing styles many times. In the West, dynamic extremes are often softened by transitional means, such as the music growing gradually softer or gradually louder to reach a new dynamic level. These are known as diminuendo and crescendo, respectively. In gamelan music, such smooth transitions are typically avoided and the effect is quite dramatic.
I hope this introduction to gamelan music has been intriguing and whetted your appetite. There's a lot to learn about this complex, polyphonic, polychrome music, and this is, after all, only an introduction, only a little taste. I've indicated that I want you next to watch a three-minute video by Mike Simpson over Slendro and Pelog tunings. Additionally, I'll link you to a YouTube video of a performance of Kosalia Arini by an ensemble of gamelan enthusiasts in Montreal, of all places. I believe you might enjoy watching them play, and it would no doubt make all this more real to you. In the next lecture, I'll talk a little about the puppet theater with which the gamelan was often associated, and will introduce you to some music by a fine Sundanese band, Krakatoa, playing one of their most popular creations. Until then, stay safe and COVID-free.